Now, in 1863, there were two acting governor generals, Monson and Robert Napier. So, I have already told you there are no fixed tenure for governor generals. Some people will come for a few years, some people will come for a few months. Okay. So, if you see, Warren Hastings was there for 1773 to 85, 12 years, right? Then 86 to 93, Lord Cornwallis was there, right? Now, few people are there for uh, 4 years, 5 years, 6 years, 12 years like this, okay? This is 7 years, so some are there for few months, acting Governor Generals. Next is uh, 1864 to 69, Lord Lawrence. Now, one thing which I need to discuss under this is, in 1865, there was uh, Anglo-Bhutanese War. Anglo-Bhutanese War in 1865, okay? Now, See, if you remember, I told you there is no further annexation. They are not trying to extend or they are not trying to expand their territory after 1857. But then why this war was fought is basically because they need to have a control over the neighboring territories. Okay. So if you have a control over Bhutan, you can check any invasion from Japan. Okay. At the same time, if you have any control in uh, Afghanistan, you can check invasions from Russia. So they are trying to, they will fight wars. You can see Anglo-Afghan war, Anglo-Bhutanese war, Anglo-Burmese war, etc. So this is the objective. They want to keep it as buffer state. Okay. So that you can check any other invasion from any other countries. Okay. So they are not interested to... Uh, extend their territory okay but they want to keep it as buffer state so they allowed even after uh, beating the Bhutanese king they allowed the Bhutanese king to continue but he became a puppet in the hands of the British obviously right so this is the only thing which I need to discuss under Lord Lawrence now next is Lord Mayo uh, important governor general for prelims most important okay so 1869 to 72 now the most important thing under this is financial distribution between center and state was started by Lord Mayo. Okay, so financial distribution between center and state started by Lord Mayo. So you can get a question: Which of the following Governor General started the financial distribution between center and the state? You get options like Lord Lytton, Lord Ripon, Lord Mayo, Lord Canning. Which one you'll pick? You'll pick Lord Mayo. Okay. Now second, so first is financial distribution. Second point. The first census was started in 1872 under Lord Mayo. Okay, now here you may have some confusion. In 1881, you will study later, Lord Ripon started first regular All India Census. Okay, so if the question is about who started the first census, it is Lord Mayo in 1872. Who started the regular All India Census? That is in 1881 by Lord Ripon. So answer for the question, if the question is uh, who started census, it is Lord Mayo. But not all India, not regular. But from 1881 onwards, it was regular. Now 1891, 1901, 1911, 1921, etc. It is going on. Last was in 2011. Okay. Now the third point, two Mayo colleges were established. Two Mayo colleges. One was in Ajmer. Okay, Ajmer is in Rajasthan. You know that. Second one was in Katiawar, which is in Gujarat. Okay. So, these two colleges were established, which is known as Mayo College. These were the first modern college in India for uh, princes and princesses of royal families. Okay. So, in Ajmer and in Katiawa, two Mayo Colleges were established. These were the modern colleges for the princes and princesses of royal families. Not for all people. Okay. So, three points that we have discussed is... Financial distribution between center and state started for the first time under Lord Mayo. First census in 1872 was started by Lord Mayo. Two Mayo colleges were established in Ajmer and Katiawar. That is for the education of princes and princesses of royal families. Okay. Now one more point. Lord Mayo is the only governor general who was killed in India. Okay. So Lord Mayo is the only governor general who was killed in India. And he was killed in Port Blair which is capital of Andaman Nicobar Islands in 1872. Okay, so he was assassinated by a Patan convict. His name was Sher Ali. So Patans are Eastern Iranian ethnic group. There a few populations are in Pakistan and uh, Afghanistan. So uh, Sher Ali belongs to 
Patan. So he was actually related to Wahhabi movement. Okay. So this actually will tell you the anger of Wahhabi people or the Muslim people or Wahhabi leaders against British at that time because Wahhabi movement was suppressed by the British. Okay, that Wahhabi movement and how the Britishers suppressed Amba Wahhabi movement and why Wahhabi leaders and Wahhabi people were against British, we will discuss. Okay, anyway, we will discuss under social religious reform movement separately. So there, I will tell you why these people are very angry against British. Okay, and that anger is reflected through the murder of. Lord Mayo when he visited Andaman Nicobar. Now next is Lord North Brook. Okay, so his time period is 1872 to 1876. Okay, now one important thing happened during his time was in 1872, Universal Marriage Act was passed. Universal Marriage Act was passed in 1872. So what happened is in through Universal Marriage Act, the intercaste marriage intercaste marriage became legalized. Okay, so if you possess the required age, minimum age and all, you can marry uh, from a different caste and the state will protect. Okay, so intercaste marriage is legalized. Now, so what was the marriage uh, practice in India? See, it's actually, we followed intra caste and inter clan. Okay, so basically we call it as caste endogamy and clan or gotra exogamy. Okay, so this is what we followed. So, if you see, let's suppose this is a caste, okay, any caste or rather Varna, okay, or uh, you take it as Brahmin, you take it as Kshatriya, these are in fact Varnas, but for time being you understand it as caste, so that the understanding will be better, okay. So, imagine these two are different caste. So, between them, marriage is not allowed. That is what you mean by caste endogamy or intra-caste, caste endogamy. So, you have to marry within caste. So, if you are a Brahmin, you should marry a Brahmin, okay. But there will be different Gotras here, okay. So, these uh, Gotras you can call it as clans or sub caste, okay. So, you are not allowed to marry within this. You have to marry outside the clan. The reason is, see, uh, the origin of clan is like uh, your forefather or your the ancestor, maybe three generation, four generation. The ancestor will be same for this clan, okay. So, the assumption is you are related by blood. So, you should not marry from this clan, okay, because all these people are related by blood. Because your ancestor is same, right? So you should marry from outside, outside clan. That's what we call as clan or gotra exogamy. So what we practiced was gotra exogamy or clan exogamy and caste endogamy. Okay. And this is what the problem of this uh, Kha Panjayat and honor killing and all. Basically, you are not allowed to marry from within. You should marry from outside. So when you are married from within, that is against the honor of the caste. Okay. That is against the honor of the gotra or against the honor of the clan. And that's why this killings and all, okay. So, this honor killing you can rarely see between this. Maximum is actually when you are marrying within, okay. So, between caste also you can see in southern states. But this is what actually the concept of honor killing, okay. You are marrying within the gotra, within the clan, okay. That is against the honor of that gotra. So, that's why it is known as honor killing, okay. Or you can in general say it is against the honor of the caste. So, honor killing. So, Universal Marriage Act was passed. Through that, marriage, intercaste marriage is legalized, okay. Second point is, uh, age of consent was increased from 10 to 12, okay. So, till then age of consent was 10, now it was increased to 12. Now, what do you mean by age of consent? It is a minimum age a woman should have or a woman need to have for a relationship without marriage, okay. So, relationship with a woman without marriage, the minimum age should be 12 now. Earlier it was 10, now it is 16, age for marriage is 18, these are contradictory, anyway, okay. Now next is uh, Lord Lytton, very controversial Governor General, we need to discuss uh, in detail about Lord Lytton, 1876 to 1880, okay. So if you see this time period, the in India nationalism was, you know, emerging and nationalism was on the rise. Because of uh, many reasons and predominantly Lord Lytton's reactionary policies culminated into, you know, formation of Congress later. So nationalism emerged, nationalism has grown and it reached at its peak due to the reactionary policies of Lytton and it culminated into the formation of Congress in 1885. So we will see what are the reactionary policies of Lytton, okay. So three controversial policies we will discuss. Before that, there was a great famine during this time 
during 1876 to 78 there was a great famine in the central part of india so what is famine acute shortage of food it may be due to natural reason or it may be due to man made reason so natural reasons are tsunami drought or rain etc what are the man made reason wars okay government policies ethnic classes community conflict religious problems so all this will create into a situation of famine right but here it was not natural cause or it was uh, actually man made reason this famine is because of man made reason that is the argument of nationalist okay so before that let me tell you there was a debate heated debate which was going on between nationalist and english british government right so on one side nationalist on the other side british government right so i told you nationalism is on the rise so these people started talking about anything and everything at that time so the nationalist version is it is not natural reason it is man made reason but what the government is saying is it is not man made reason it is natural reason right so because the famine is because of drought okay so there is no rain that resulted into drought that resulted into acute shortage of food that's what the version of the government but what uh, the nationalist say is british policies of taxation and all made people poor so people have no purchasing power people have very less money with them because most of the uh, produce they are paying as tax okay so they were not in a position to buy okay so they have uh, very less purchasing power with them so even if there is a small variation in the prices it will result in acute shortage of food and that is actually the reason in fact so british government is not ready to accept it they say that it is because of lack of rain drought and that is the reason why shortage of food okay now more than all these things now because of this famine more than 25 lakh people perished and uh, more than lakhs of animals died this famine was affected in the central part of india okay now more than the famine the government behavior is what actually angered and annoyed the nationalist the famine is there people are facing acute shortage of food people don't have food even to survive right but in 1877 1877 just before i have mentioned with you when we discussed about queen's proclamation after 1857 revolt in 1857 when queen victoria came to india for the first time they arranged a ceremony which is known as delhi darbar there was a question in the last to last year about delhi darbar but what, that is not about this delhi darbar in the 1911 delhi darbar okay we'll come to that delhi darbar so it was a famous celebration to welcome queen victoria so all these kings and all these local rulers the rulers of princely states etc they went to meet uh, the queen with a lot of gifts and gift and uh, they spent a lot of public money so on one side public or people are suffering with the famine and on the other side a lot of public money is wasted just to appease the queen so that the queen will not change her word what is that word she is not going to annex any states further right no further annexation so to appease the queen they when they conducted this delhi darbar they spent a lot of money and that's what angered and annoyed the nationalist uh, this delhi darbar is important because she was declared the empress of uh, india okay empress or queen of india okay and she was given a title kaiser i hind okay so this is uh, caesar of india kaiser means as it's a persian word of caesar okay so caesar of india this title was given to mahatma gandhi also when he was in south africa so delhi darbar is in 1877 this angered the nationalist because a lot of public money was spent unnecessarily when the people are suffering when millions are suffering and uh, in this delhi darbar queen victoria was declared as empress or queen of india and she was given a title of kaiser i hind okay kaiser is a persian word of caesar and mahatma gandhi was also given this title when he was in south africa after the famine a famine commission was appointed okay that is another important point a famine commission was appointed which was headed by richard strachey richard strachey obviously appointed and he come up with certain recommendations and those recommendations or which is known as famine code which was drafted under lord ripon in 1880 which is famously known as famine code 1880 we'll come to that or if you want i'll discuss here so that you'll not uh, forget it okay see one thing which you need to keep in mind is who appointed the famine commission it was appointed by lord lytton but who drafted the famine code lord ripon okay so famine commission was headed by richard strachey now let's quickly look into what is that famine code okay famine code of 1880 what are the clauses right see the first point is there is no tax in areas with a crop failure of uh, 50 percentage or more okay so if you have 50 percentage or more crop failure you don't want to pay tax okay so this is the first provision no tax in areas with a crop failure of more than 50% okay so if you have a crop failure of more than 50% you don't have to pay the tax 
second provision the government will provide food to the people in the famine affected area okay the government will provide food or basically the government will provide work and in return people will get food grain okay so the first food for work program was actually started here okay so government will provide food to people and in return they have to work for the government okay so first thing if if there is a crop failure of greater than 50 percent you don't want to pay tax government will provide food to people okay government will give work and in return they will get the food grain third is government will provide fodder for animals okay the government will provide fodder for animals so this is what famine code of 1880 three points government will provide food to people in return of work the government will provide fodder for animals and you don't want to pay tax if you have a crop failure of more than 50 percentage okay okay now come back to Lytton where we st where we were actually discussing about Lytton right and uh, when we discuss about Lytton apart from this uh, famine which was very controversial in 1878 there were three controversial policies okay I'll quickly tell you what are that so first is something called as Arms Act, Arms Act of 1878, then second one Vernacular Press Act of 1878, third is uh, lowering the age of civil services. So all this happened in 1878, okay. So Arms Act of 1878, Vernacular Press Act of 1878, lowering the age of civil service again in 1878, okay. All the three happened in 1878. Now, what is this Arms Act? See, under Arms Act, the rules for getting the license to possess arms made a bit tougher for Indians. Okay, so if you need to possess arms, you need to get license. To get that license, you need to uh, pass certain conditions. Okay, so those conditions became more tough for Indians and the same law is relaxed for English people. So the nationalists felt it as discriminatory. Okay, so they started protesting against it. Okay, so that is why Arms Act became controversial. So the rules for license to possess arms became little tough for Indians and which was relaxed for English. So it was discriminatory. So nationalists went against it and it was opposed by the nationalist. Now the second is uh, Vernacular Press Act. Okay, 1878. Now what is this? Vernacular means local language. Okay, see if you need to publish something in local language, it has to pass through censors. You cannot publish it before it passes through censors. So it will be evaluated, it will be seen by someone and then only you can publish it. Same law is relaxed for English newspapers. Okay, so only for vernacular papers you will face this problem. If it is English language, no problem. Again, it was uh, understood as discriminatory. So nationalists opposed it, right? Because it was a great attack towards the freedom of speech and expression, right? And nationalist at any point of time in history is always in support of freedom of thoughts and expression and all right and which was granted by our constitution through article 19 1 and 2 and major blot happened to this is after this if you see in uh, during indira gandhi time okay the post independence time 1975 to 1977 you can see again censorship was imposed as like a century celebration okay 1878 and 1977 okay if we will discuss this in detail in post independence india so two things arms act of 1878 then vernacular press act of 1878 next is uh, lowering the age of civil services see what happened is the maximum age limit to appear in civil service exam at that time was 21 and it was lowered to 19 with a minimum qualification of graduation you need to be a graduate okay so see now the minimum age is 21 you cannot imagine right so that time it was maximum 21 but further lowered to 19 with a condition of being a graduate now see if you see the indian education setup you can never be a graduate at the age of 19 okay see you will complete your 10th and uh, 15 years or maximum 14 then 16 to 17 you will complete your plus 2 okay so if it is 14 to 15 this is 16 to 17 then if it is a normal graduation you will complete in 19 to 20 if it is some professional course you'll take more time okay so at the age of 19 only in the most in the best scenario you will complete a graduation so will you be able to write this exam maybe you will be able to give a one attempt okay earlier you would have given two attempt or three attempt like that so that also created some issues among the aspiring civil servants right so many people were unable to write exam okay see the person who is having 20 years at this time he was expecting that he can write exam two more times okay two more years is there so immediately this look now you can relate to yourself and you can understand the situation better than what i can teach you right so the person who is having the age of 20 he cannot write till then it was 21 now it is 90 means he will not be able to write so definitely definitely he will face some problem and uh, these people 
those who the, the those aspiring civil servants those who were not able to write exam because of this they became the future congress leaders very much like now also those people who are preparing and they lost their attempt they will become coaching class uh, teachers or politicians or whatever it is same way here those people became the congress leaders so in in 1885 the congress was formed most of the leaders are from this uh, community aspiring community so the middle there was a strong middle class see in 1857 we have seen the universities were established at calcutta bombay and madras right so after that lot of uh, intellectuals started coming they were aspiring to become civil servants right so they are not able to write exam now because of this provision 21 to 19 so what happened they became congress leaders so this decision resulted in anger and anguish among the aspiring civil servants okay so they became the nationalist so nationalism was emerging during this time because of all these reactionary policies of lytton so what all things we have discussed lytton first thing is great famine during 1876 to 78 and we have discussed about delhi darbar in 1877 we have discussed about queen victoria was declared as empress of india or queen of india and given a title of kaiser i hind okay which was given to mahatma gandhi in south africa when he was in south africa then we have discussed about arms act of 1878 we have discussed about vernacular press act of 1878 we have discussed about lowering the age of civil services which is also in 1878 so these are the most important things which we need to discuss under lord lytton <laughs>